we were recorded <laughs> along with 550 others <laughs> that you can find on Facebook, YouTube. I just have a few announcements to make. Uh, and, and while I talk, please try and sit still, do the meditation. You know, don't fidget, move. It really disrupts the energy of the class. Uh, first one is that I'm happy to say that, uh, you know, the next uh, little essay I've written is going to appear on my post on my website tomorrow. I Usually they go there on Saturday, but it's going to be posted tomorrow, and I hope you all enjoy it. You know, it's not only the writing, but there's there's really a very nice museum of Tibetan art <laughs> I'm posting on my website, of really the highest caliber Tibetan art. So I hope you all enjoy it and you uh, you know get something from it. Second thing is is that next weekend, next Thursday is Thanksgiving here. It's a big holiday and. I'm not sure if I'm going to have a class because uh, there's all the cooking and this and that going on. And so there might not be a class next Thursday. Does anyone have a question they would like to? I have a question, Stuart Chris. Yes, Chris. This is kind of esoteric. I've been reading um, in the book about Ramakrishna that when the men came to be monks, they all, they performed what they call renunciation. And I wondered if that relates to surrender. So are they surrendering their lives to be monks or, you know, is it related? Chris, you'll have to ask Ramakrishna. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I don't live, look, I don't live in that Hindu world. You understand? I don't live in that world of ashrams and Namaste and Satguru and all of that other stuff. I don't live there. And I I don't want to live there. You understand? I mean, look, I've run ashrams and I don't want to do that anymore. I'm very I, to me, the greatest ashram is life. Yeah. And what the disciplines are with these people that are involved in all of these ashrams and stuff. Uh, you know, you'll have to ask them. Okay. I mean, my experience in running ashrams is that most people that lived in the ashram that I read were there running away from the world. I know. Mm -hmm. And it's joy in my heart and the great love in my heart to have discovered that the world is the ashram. <laughs> Life is the ashram. Not some sanctuary, not some place to go and hide, you know, and abide by all these disciplines and rules and things that you have to abide by. You know, it's life itself is the greatest teacher. My job, as I've said 152,000 times, <laughs> is to help everyone build a system inside themselves so they can truly discover that the life around them is sacred. The life inside them is sacred. And what people do in renouncing the world and all that stuff, I guess, you know, I mean, like, I remember I was once with Rudy and he said, you know, all these swamis that are celibates, they must have had some serious sex life in their last <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> he told me, I mean, I just cracked up, you know? I mean, <laughs> I mean, they must have worked all that out in their last lifetime, you know? I mean, I... <laughs> Thank you. I, I don't know. All I know is that uh, my job is to continue to get stronger inside to each day of my life to allow the world to get more sacred, you know, to really understand that I am living at the center of God's manifestation. That's what I wrote about in this upcoming uh, thing that's going to be on my website, you know. That Genesis is not something that happened a million years ago. Genesis is something that's happening every moment. All of life is being created around us every moment. We live at the center of God's creation so that everything is sacred. Even the crap that we don't like is teaching us about what we have to do inside ourselves 
to get closer to God. Oh, that is beautiful. Thank you. So I don't know. I mean, look, I've been in ashrams. I ran ashrams. I, <laughs> and even when I was running an ashram, I tried to avoid sanctimonious nonsense. I really did. You know, I just didn't, you know, I just wanted people to be human. And I think to me, that is the essential, I mean, you we have family, we have friends, we have jobs, we have everything is sacred. And in order for us to be conscious of the sacred nature, we have to get over ourselves. Yeah. That really is the key. Not to follow laws and doctrine, but we get over ourselves. Suddenly everything becomes holy around. Everything becomes a, a magnificent teacher that we need to learn something from. I mean, even in the Jewish religion, you know, they have a prayer for everything, you know, no matter what you do, there's a prayer yeah. that you're supposed to say before you do it. When I was younger, I didn't understand that, but now I understand it, you know? Everything is sacred. We have to bow down to it. Oh. We have to be grateful that we are alive, living in God's world. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Hey, well, can I share? Can I share something? Yes. Who's talking? Galit. <laughs> oh, Galit. I'm sorry, Galit. Yes. Galit, I want you to know, I had a very great student once, wonderful woman who was a great human being, became a teacher, This, and you remind me of her. It's really? really amazing. Your energy is so similar to her that, you know, it's just a joy, you know. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you. I was very dis distracted tonight at the meditation. There were many, many aircraft in the air and even fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> and my children were walking and, and playing music. And Can I tell you I something, could... dear? Can I tell you something? Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. It's showing you that if you truly get your attention focused in the chakra below the navel, you can detach yourself from all of that. You know, when I was younger, when I first met my teacher, and he taught me all these things that I'm trying to teach here, uh, I used to go on the subways in New York during rush hour. And there is nothing like the subways in the, I mean, it's like a cattle car, you know, people crushed up next to each and I would try to do my meditation. Could I detach myself from that? And I use that as a way of truly going deeper inside myself. It was an exercise. So let the airplanes remind you, if you go deep enough, you will detach, they will not bother you. Let your children running around, just love them. And let them remind you that if you go deep enough inside yourself, they will not disturb you. And you can build that kind of system. And what that, about the fireworks? Huh? What, what if, about the fireworks? <laughs> even the fireworks, too. You know? you know, I used to go, years ago, I would go to basketball games. I lived in a college town, and they had a very good basketball team. And I would go for the last eight minutes of the game. And if it was a close game, there would be screaming and yelling. And I mean, it was incredible. And I would sit there and do my meditation and just suck in all the energy. At the end of the game, everybody was drained and I just floated out of the arena. <laughs> <laughs> but I had built that kind of system that enabled me to do that kind of thing. Same thing with fireworks and airplanes and everything. It's all a distraction until you get strong enough in yourself 
not to allow it to be a distraction. So you're here learning this and learn it and you will be able to able to deal with anything without allowing it to take your energy from you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question? Hi, Stuart, it's Paula. Yes, Paula, I missed you, dear. Where have you been? I miss you so much. So happy to be here. Um, I have two things I'd like to say on the heels of this last share. I remember the meditation with you when your alarm would not stop going off and you tried <laughs> turning it off and it didn't work and you finally just put it on the floor. And it was such a lesson we did that meditation with your alarm ringing for most of the class. And then at the end, it finally Listen, stopped. Paula, dear, I used to have a loft on 4th Avenue and 10th Street, right on 4th Avenue. And it was almost inevitable in every meditation, police sirens would go off, fire engines would come by, people would be screaming on the streets. I mean, it was extraordinary. And it became just another way of getting focused, yes. not allowing oneself to get caught up in all that. Yes. But it was inevitable in every, I mean, I had a 4,000 square foot loft, it was huge, this place, you know? And I, every meditation class, there were 30, 40 people in every meditation class and fire engines, people screaming, yeah, parades would come by. I mean, it was unbelievable. Subway trains would rumble under the ground. I mean, and it was an incredible exercise. Can I stay detached? Yes. Can I stay focused and not allow that to interfere with my connection with spirit? You know how yeah. strong people got because of that? Yeah. And the quiet days were like a miracle. You know, Sunday mornings were like a miracle <laughs> in New York City. <laughs> it's quiet. <laughs> And then you, you answered my question because one of my favorite words is sacred. And you're saying the world is sacred. God created it. And I have a challenge on the days that I do go into New York, just a few blocks walking to work. It's a challenge. It's a challenge not to be, you know, in, in judgment or in fear or in this or in that. And then you, you said it succinctly. I need to be stronger. It's not that the world has to change. The world I is not going to change. Yes. It's not going to change. You understand? We have to change. Yes. Yep. Be, to be honest with you, when I lived in Texas, I, after nine years, I realized I had done everything possible I can do to grow in that place. There was nothing else left for me to do. And I left. I went back to New York because I figured if I can do this in New York City, it's got to be the single most difficult place in the world to do this. That's right. <laughs> so I went back there because of that. Instead of being a big fish in a small pond, I went back to try to grow above 8 million people and the intensity of that place. It really enabled me to have a spiritual life in New York City only because it was almost impossible to do it there. Yes. And I realized it wasn't the external world, it was me, I had to get stronger. And then you get focused. <clears throat> I mean, I used to go to concerts at Carnegie Hall and Lincoln Center, and I remember seeing with one of the author Rubenstein, one of the really great pianists, you know, and he would just take one finger and touch a key and the whole concert hall would fill up with music. And I was like, how, how does he do that? Discipline, concentration, focus, you know, 30 years of practicing nine hours a day gave him the capacity to fill a concert hall with one finger. It's amazing. Amazing. And we have a way of doing it by focusing at the very core of our being, which detaches us from all of this distraction. Stuart? Yes. Can I share one more thing? 
Excuse can me? I share one? Can I share one more thing? Yes, please. Okay. I feel that I'm connected to some energy in this meditation. And that energy sees me as I am and love me as I am. And I find it quite amazing. Only because, really, you have a really ancient soul. And that soul of yours has been looking for something like this for a really long time. I was the same way when I found it. You know, I'd gone looking all over the world for somebody to teach me what my teacher Rudy was teaching, taught me when I found it. Totally changed my life. But you have an ancient soul and you've been looking and you found something that can nurture that soul inside you. And learn how to detach from fireworks. <laughs> and airplanes. <laughs> and the airplanes. Even your children running around. I hope it will be quite night here. I live close to Gaza. <laughs> okay. Okay. Does Thank anyone you. else have a you know, well, does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, I just want to just say one thing. I, it's look, next week is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is kind of a holiday that is very significant and saying thanks to the world for the grace of God, you know. And I would like to really thank everybody that comes to these classes. I'd like to thank you for the donations you make to help me teach these classes. I would thank you for being here, for being part of this for sharing in the energy of these meditations and hopefully allowing that energy to truly, you know, get you to grow inside yourself. Ultimately, we all have to have our own independent connection with God. When you learn to do that, I am doing my job. So I want to just tell you how grateful I am for all of it for Thanksgiving, for all of you, for donations, for all the things that people have done this year that have made my life work and better. And so God bless you all and thank you. And I'm, you know, there'll be a class on Sunday and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. Thank you. Thank you, you too. God bless thank you. Thank you so much, Stuart. Thank you. Very thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.